Imagine this. You're in a public cafe trying to find some love with a beautiful working girl online. And goodness gracious, looks like you're about to get lucky. But come on now. You know on a moral, social level, it ain't right to pull out your pepka and yank it to cam girls in public. But through the eyes of a well-meaning but terrifyingly violent Yakuza in a digital world, you might be inclined to do whatever the hell. In fact, you might be inclined to pull all kinds of unsavory moves in a digital space. Speeding, fighting, killing, other non-kosher activities. But why are players so okay pulling off such scumbag moves? Like sneaking peeks at Android cheeks? Well, that's because of moral disengagement, baby. Moral disengagement theory suggests that individuals tend to cognitively separate the moral component from an otherwise unprincipled act in order to rationalize engaging in it. In simpler terms, it's the mental gymnastics someone goes through to justify their horrible actions for their own mental sake. And your favorite games do a lot to encourage this subconscious act. So players can continue doing this and not want to throw up. Now I know what you're going to say, but why would I feel bad harming fake people? Well, sweetie pie, that's because of Hartman's dual process model of media reality. Don't worry, this is the only other theory we'll be touching on. The dual process model suggests folks are able to simultaneously know the game they're playing is fake, but feel that it's real. See, us human types have two mental systems that process information. One that is highly automatic and sensory, the other, logical. From a top-down point of view, soda on your breath, stick in your hand, you know this ain't nothing but pixels. But good facial animations, emotional vocal performances, I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light, 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 light. and human reactions to human-like situations, can make a player intuitively perceive a game character as a social being, worthy of your moral considerations. This is one explanation for why players can love, hate, cry for, empathize with, and judge a bunch of code. Now back to what this video is actually about. Pardon the detour if you would. Moral disengagement. Bandora says it comes in eight distinct dubious flavors, or mechanisms. But we're going to focus on these four. Moral justification, euphemistic labeling, dehumanization, and distortions of consequences. Because most common game design choices, intentionally or not, helps triggers one or a combination of these mechanisms within players. Let me explain. Let's start with the first mechanism, moral justification. Moral justification is rationalizing actions taken by a person to achieve a valued social or moral purpose. Game developers are constantly figuring out ways to either match up with the player's values or encourage players to value something else to the point that they wouldn't mind. Knee shot. And developers do this in a few ways. They can decide to give players a real good guy to play. Think Mario saving Peach. It is an easy ask for a player to take control of the Italian plumber and enslave innocent animals with Cappy because players are working towards a purpose that most people would agree is valuable through actions that can easily be portrayed as necessary and good for that purpose. But you're not always playing a good guy. Sometimes the writers want to craft a more layered, more interesting character. A character that is so interesting that despite what the game is asking you to do, you believe it's worth it for the purpose of keeping that character safe, satisfied, and or successful. Writers and designers make these kinds of characters through deep characterization, engaging designs, sympathetic backstories, or just coco levels of charisma. Sure, most wouldn't destroy a cultural building all in the search of treasure, but most would do it for the chance to see Nathan Drake yeah. smile. <laughs> but you want to know what gamers value more than a charming white man's smile? Points, achievements, trophies, Success. Players value completing and achieving within games over anything else. And any action or input is well justified if it fulfills that purpose. 
And as long as there's a good narrative that players just have to finish, good in-game reward systems like distinct loot, comprehensive upgrade system, and a difficult, but not too difficult now, gameplay that can give a sense of achievement, gamers will be more inclined to do whatever harmful act is needed for that hit of dopamine. Bonus points if there is a result screen saying how good they were with the crimes. Which leads into the next MD mechanism, euphemistic labeling. Check this, after a little jaunt in the sunny sewer south of the border, bad bitch cover girl Ryden Ripper headed to the Mile High City where he had a little conversation with the local police and then proceeded to vivisect said police force. Then posed as he was graded. Time, 2 minutes, 50 seconds. Longest combo, 46. Combat rate, A. When it should say, 12 counts of first degree murder, assault with a deadly weapon. Results, life imprisonment, no parole. See, euphemistic labeling is when a person uses selective language to cognitively disguise the harmfulness of activities or bestow a respectable status on them. Video games do a lot of language selecting. Sometimes it's in your face, coolifying murder. Most of the time though, it's more subtle things seen in the UI and the HUD. You're not choosing to be a dick, you're being a renegade. Your disingenuous assertions. You didn't just run a cop off the road and kill him, you just wrecked a pursuer. You're not tricking your way to banging some chick, you're scoring. Hold on a minute. As you would imagine, adding score or any other language that gamify actions is a common practice among developers when de naming despicable acts as one players can respect. Devs also at times choose words that lean so hard into the bad act Finish her. that it becomes ridiculous and unable to be taken seriously, which can be another form of euphemistic labeling. There's not much else to say about this mechanism. It's a relatively easy idea to wrap your head around, right? Devs just choose less scary words. Simple. One can argue though, it's the most prominent and second most important mechanism for players. Because gamers are constantly seeing, hearing, <laughs> and doing effed up things, but it's constantly being told that what they are doing is good. That subconscious reinforcement is a powerful tool. The next mechanism is another simple one to understand, but can have some mean social implications. Dehumanization, just like it sounds, when a person divests or strip a person of human qualities in an effort to avoid the enhanced guilt people feel when they harm something similar to them. How game devs help players dehumanize seems pretty obvious. They aim you in the direction of angels or undead or demons to rip and tear until it's done. It's when you want to kill waves of human enemies when developers get a little more creative with their dehumanization. Or really, they do the opposite. Remember earlier when we were talking about emotional voice acting and good facial animations and all that good stuff? Well, developers strip human NPCs and enemies to the absolute basics. Little facial animation or masking them up, silly AI, and every enemy is a clone of the last fool you kill. Now game developers are likely doing the minimum with essentially a death fodder because it's cheaper, less time consuming, and less important than making sure the controllable character gets all those good details. But I like to think that the humanization of enemies is just a happy consequence. What isn't so much of a happy consequence is the unfortunate associations that can be made basing an enemy off a real life group of people. Basing an enemy off a real life group of people and then turning them into faceless whores to be gunned down can enforce dangerous ideas some may have about other people or influence them to see others as less. I'm not saying playing the OG COD mod is going to make you want to cause domestic terrorism. I'm just saying that if you had any inkling of something like that, playing modern warfare is not going to help. Not really last, and certainly not least, of the MD mechanisms is distortions of consequences. Ignoring, distorting, minimizing, or disbelieving the consequences of actions. Like most forms of media, Games want to bake their cake and eat it too. Devs want to create tension so they make consequences for the players, 
usually in the form of game overs or spawning in more difficult enemies to kill them. But they want players to continue playing and enjoying the game, not catching heart attacks anytime an enemy gets close, or make them sick to the stomach after creating some orphans. So they essentially make all emotional, legal, and social consequences gamer-proof. Cops don't get called when fighting in front of the White House. Players don't pay millions of dollars in speeding fines. They don't get chopped in their throat for flagrantly, and I mean flagrantly, staring at women's tits. Not only do devs minimize consequences, they give players all the tools and the blueprints needed to avoid these baby punishments. In games, you can start a fight, kill someone, run away, and just be forgotten. Until you go back to finish the job, of course. You can start off trying to buy your teacher as a prostitute, and by the end of it, with some good box clicking, she can be your girlfriend. Oh, fine. In games that have dire choices or multiple endings, they kind of lose their edge because saves and checkpoints exist, making it easier for a player to try everything and see every result. That's the thing about games as a medium. It's all about players trying over and over and over again until they reach the desired outcome. Or they just delete the bad saves, which allows players to act a little more wild and a little more loose. Game companies can never make a game with big boy permanent consequences. And I know, I know, I know. You love Nuzlocke. Rock quick claw and then have the point. What did I say, Brayden? What did You would kill for a super hardcore permadeath version of Elden Rings. Because you're a little masochist and you enjoy punishment. What you want to enjoy is to be forced by a game to play the same jailhouse level for 12 real time years for your constant criminal activity. Players, you, me, like light consequences and can only handle light tension which is okay because that's what helps make games fun and allow players to cut loose instead of being overly stressful and forcing players to act normal, which we can all agree isn't as fun. And that's some of the ways games intentionally or not makes it easier for you to be a scumbag. The funny thing about this though, as video games continue to grow as an art form, devs are finding ways to make players feel like shit for their shitty actions. Gameplay and narrative beats that strips players of their ability to disengage. Spec Ops The Line White Phosphorus Scene. Undertale saves and replayability, especially when you don't play pacifist first. It Takes Two's Cutie Puzzle, a near automata's choice between A2 and 9S are just a few examples. Is it a good idea for games to try to make gamers face the consequences of their virtual actions? I guess that just depends on who's making them and who's playing them, I guess. So yeah, that's all I got. If any of y'all have some other examples of games using MD mechanisms, or have questions or corrections about moral disengagement, or just want to yell into the ether, please do in the comments section below. I prefer mostly benign comments, but if you can't help yourself, what can I do other than suck my teeth? Also, I do want to give all the credit in the world to Professor Tilo Hartman. I got the idea and a lot of the information for this video from his journal article that's linked below. It's not a bad read and I encourage you to give it a gander. With that being said, if you're feeling this video and want others like it, please like and subscribe. If you do or don't, I appreciate your time. Hope you all have a good one now. See ya.